Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to take a look at a Radio Shack color computer uh, that actually works and now if you've seen any of my previous videos you'll know that I've been working on uh, repairing a, a couple of uh, Radio Shack color computer motherboards that uh, I blew up myself. Um, I uh, recently found one in working condition on Craigslist and uh, decided to pick it up so I figured before I pull it apart I would uh, show you guys what's uh, in this computer, what's it all about, and we'll take a look inside. Color. So this is the Coco 3. The Coco 3 is a pretty straightforward, you know, single box computer, home computer from, uh, you know, this is 1986, 1987 vintage. Uh, it has a, you know, pretty reasonable keyboard. If you're familiar with the original Cocos, uh, this keyboard is much improved. And I remember when this, uh, the Coco 3 and the later Coco 2s came out, uh, being just blown away by this great keyboard that was there. So very exciting. Other uh, awesome thing was the inclusion of an F1 and an F2 key, which I, I don't think I ever saw any programs actually use, but it was great to have these because, you know, real computers had F1 and F2. So on the back, we've got a bunch of 80s style connectors. Uh, there's a reset button here. There's audio video out, which actually was a, a major feature in 1986. Uh, earlier Coco's, didn't have that except for some very late Coco 2s. Um, I had one of those rare Coco 2s with a video out. That was a, an amazing thing at the time. Uh, and then there's RF out, which is what 90% of the people using these computers would use. And this connects to your TV on channel three or four. Because it's through the TV, the resolution was pretty horrible. Uh, but, uh, you know, for millions of people, that's how they would uh, use their computers. They'd use it with a regular TV. There's a cassette port here. Cassette port is a 1500 baud cassette. Uh, that's pretty slow, but if you compare it to you know a lot of the computers at the time, that cassette port was pretty close to the speed of a lot of disk drives. So it, it wasn't that bad. Uh, it wasn't like 15 minutes to load a game. It was more like three or four minutes, which was too you know pretty slow anyways, especially if you're waiting to play you know Donkey Kong or Donkey King or Donkey Monkey or whatever they called it because. That's a whole other story about how the Coco didn't have licensed games. It had a bunch of uh, uh, knockoff type games, but uh, I could talk about that for hours. Um, serial I.O. here. The serial I.O. is um, pretty crummy. It's uh, what they call the bit banger port. And the reason it's a bit banger is because you uh, implemented your serial code directly in software as opposed to having a, a proper piece of hardware to uh, decode and encode the uh, serial signals. So this really just provided a 12 volt, uh, positive 12 volt and negative 12 volt input for serial and uh, the software had to do it. And because of that, it was pretty slow. So maximum reliable speed on this is about 2400 baud. There are some hacks that people have done to get it faster. So um, you can uh, uh, use this if you're, if you're working with drive wire and software like that. They've, they've managed to make this go faster, but reliably, uh, really only 2400 baud. And most people would use it at 1200 or even 300 baud. So uh, that's a, a pretty basic serial port. Radio Shack did sell a serial RS-232 pack, which would go up to 9600 baud reliably. That was like 150 bucks or something like this, which was, you know, almost as much as this computer. So very few people actually got those. Other two ports we have here are the joystick ports. The joysticks on the Coco were pretty advanced uh, compared to, say, the Atari, uh, some other computers out there. The Atari joysticks were just a bunch of switches. Uh, this joystick is two potentiometers uh, in order to determine an X and Y coordinate. So you've, you've got inputs for, you know, four potentiometers right here. And a lot of people actually use these, you know, they use them for joysticks for sure. Um, but a lot of people use them for projects. This would be an, you know, an analog input that they would use uh, in order to, you know, read temperatures or, or do whatever, you know, some external functions. So it was kind of cool to use those as, for different projects. And uh, here you've got your power switch. Now on the bottom, there is a RGB out. And I don't know if you can see that label there. I'm gonna try to get this to focus in here. The RGB out is a um, 15 kilohertz RGB, which is very rare. So you can't just plug this into, you know, your regular CGA monitor or anything like that. It gives quite a, uh, a high quality output. Uh, and if you have the appropriate monitor, it's great. 
I may uh, get an adapter at some point so that I could use this with a uh, regular monitor and there are uh, adapters on the market now to do that. If we look at the uh, label, it's certified for FCC, da, 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 128K Color Computer 2, serial number 1002052. I'm not sure what that means. Is that early or late? Probably get some more information when I pull it apart. Uh, product of Korea. Uh, I think all Coco 3s were made in Korea. Coco 2s were originally made in the States and then they moved the production over to Korea. Uh, but I don't think Coco 3s were ever made in the States. This particular one, the case is in great shape. I mean, it's, uh, you know, quite, quite good condition. There's no scratches, no chip plastic. So uh, it's uh, a shame I'm going to pull it all apart. Uh, on the side here, we've got the cartridge port. Cartridge port is a direct connection into the uh, bus of the computer. So you've got connections to all your address lines, all your data lines right there. Uh, you can interface when you're interfacing into a Coco, you can really connect to anything that's in the hardware uh, directly. So uh, quite a powerful uh, connector on the side. And actually that's one of the great things about the Coco is that it was it was designed as a games machine but turned out to be a really good little hacker machine and hobbyist machine and that's why a lot of guys you know like me who had one of these as a kid uh, went into a career in computers because we were kind of uh, encouraged to you know dig things dig into things um, and learn about how the computer worked at a, at a lower level and you know to learn programming and, and so on and so forth so uh Enough talking about this machine. Let's uh, pull it apart and see what's inside. Now, I've got something here. Uh, you'll see there's actually a warranty sticker still on this computer. It's never been opened, which is, uh, well, certainly rare in my house. I've never, you know, had a computer that stayed sealed for too long so i'm going to bust the seal on this thing there we go and the warranties now no longer valid so i can't go to my local radio shack store which of course doesn't exist anymore and get warranty service Boom. there we go we'll drop that Okay, come on, we can do it. So, when I bought this, the guy thought it was a 512K machine. I know already uh, it is not a 512K machine because I could see through the, the vents. Actually, you can take a look here. Um, let's get that in the shot. So, see that white header right there? That's your memory your memory upgrade and if there's something sitting there you don't see the white header then you've got a 512k machine you might even have more if someone's got a custom memory board but this one uh, didn't have a memory board in I could tell it didn't the guy thought it had 512k nice enough guy um, I didn't want to debate it the price was right at uh, you know 128k it was the price was good good enough for me to, to purchase it anyways okay so we've got the two pieces apart and let's take a look at oh hey look at that so let's remove this top piece it's gone and there's the coco 3. so you got your keyboard here it is on some uh, pilings raised up in the the case keyboard is connected with a, a ribbon cable there this is a uh, like a carbon film ribbon cable. They are uh, quite difficult to work with. So, you know, if you want to extend this cable or something like that for a project, uh, good luck. I haven't found a good solution to it. Um, power supply here. The power supply is actually, it's an AC power supply. So it's putting out uh, something like 16 volts AC on this side. The AC to DC conversion is handled in this section of the motherboard. Uh, so we have all our power supply. You can see there's capacitors and uh, diodes here and there's somewhere over here. I've got a, a regulator. 
I've got uh, a power supply chip. I've got a nice big capacitor here to smooth out the power. So power supply is over here. That's one thing that will trip you up if you ever try to repack one of these computers in a different case is that the power supply itself requires uh, positive and negative 12 volts uh, as well as a 5 volt source. And uh, if you're just trying to connect a PC power supply to the motherboard, you're going to have some issues if you don't have a negative 12 volt power source. And uh, I go on about that because I blew up two of these boards not thinking about it while I was trying to connect them to a uh, PC power supply. So, lesson learned. You can see here's the RF modulator. Here's the RAM chips over here. And you can see, as I said, you know, earlier before I pulled this thing apart, there is no 512K RAM board in this computer. Fortunately, I've got one sitting around. Uh, so I'm going to pop that in there. CPUs right here. This is the brains of the operation. It, you'll notice, is connected almost directly to this connector here because the uh, data bus and the uh, address bus are directly exposed on that connector. Let's move that keyboard out of the way. We've got a gimme chip here. This is the prized possession in any Coco. If this chip blows out, you don't have a Coco anymore and you can't get these anywhere. Now, in one of my other videos, someone mentioned that someone is trying to build a new gimme chip. I hope they do. Uh, that would be really cool. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, if you have a board with a blown gimme, you're not going to, it's not going to work. RAM chip here. And then we've got uh, two PIA chips from Motorola uh, 6821s. And there's a compatible chip, which is a Tandy custom one, also compatible with the 6821. Yeah, so that's really it. It's a very simple computer. Not much to it. Single board simple case and uh, you know this was really the start of a lot of people's career it was a great uh, little computer at the time and uh, today 30 years later I still enjoy playing with them and I intend to play with uh, this one and uh, I don't know do some neat projects thanks for watching my video I hope you enjoyed that I have some more uh, Coco videos on my uh, channel and uh, other general programming and technology videos. Uh, take a look at them, check them out, and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Thanks a lot. Bye.